After a small period at the works, Thomas soon returned to the yard with his brakes mended. He was looking forward to pulling Annie and Clarabelle again. But when he returned, he found them looking very cool indeed. What's the matter? he asked them. Didn't you enjoy working with Boko? Oh, we did, but the trucks have been saying horrible things to us, Annie replied. They called us feeble, Clarabelle added, and said we don't take proper loads. But passengers are proper loads, said Thomas. They say they don't help anyone. They just travel for fun. And he continued. And so we are a waste of space in the yard. Rubbish, Thomas boasted. They're just jealous because they're not as shiny or clean as either of you two. Believe me, you two are the pride of the line. That made Annie and Clarabelle feel slightly better. But the next day, when Thomas left them in the yard, the trucks began their tricks again. What are these big orange timber off costs doing here? They cackled. This yard should be trucks only. Our loads are important. Clarabelle was fuming. We get the important jobs. Your lots are too dirty for passengers and luggage. We're dirty because we work hard. I was told to build your station. Without us, you wouldn't be needed. Without our passengers, your station wouldn't be needed. Now the trucks were cross and began plotting a way to play Clarabelle out. Before long, Thomas returned to the yard to collect them. He was coupled up, but no one was aware of the careless shunter had left the brakes off the truck. Thomas waited as Stepney ran past the passenger train from the western. Rattling round the ground as he did, the points changed and the truck started to roll as Thomas set off. The axle jolted and the front wheels came off the rails. Thomas grounded to a stop, blocking the junction. The trucks just giggled. Told you you took up too much space! Clarabelle signed. I know you remember. What stupid things! She could remember. Harvey helped sort them out, hoisting Clarabelle back onto the rail. By the time Thomas got to the platform, he was very late. Most of his passengers were left on Bertie. It wasn't your fault, he said to Clarabelle. He was still quite upset. It was those silly trucks! And he moaned. The next day, Annie and Carabelle were left in the yard again, whilst Thomas took some milk down to Elfbridge. Whilst he was gone, the yard foreman came to speak to the fat controller. The stone in these trucks is for the docks, but we don't have a brake van. We can't send a train without a brake van. Seeing an opportunity to straighten things out, Carabelle spoke up. Excuse me, sir, I, I have a guard's compartment. The guard can use my brakes to keep the trucks under control. That's an excellent idea, the fat controller smiled. Are you sure you can manage them? I can try, sir, but trains need to run on time. Yes, the fat controller agreed and went to make the arrangements. That night, Clarabelle was coupled to the back of the train. The trucks were not impressed. Silly coach, they must. She can't handle us. The train left and set off down the line. They arrived at the docks on time with no The next morning, Thomas was in the yard with Annie when Neville dropped in, fully men with the car behind him. That was a splendid idea of yours. Thomas said the fat controller says the train went no different than usual and that you make an excellent break on. Clarabelle beamed. From that day almost the truck stopped teasing Clarabelle because now they know as well as taking passengers she and her guard can keep their tricks under control so she is useful in more ways than one.